Welcome back to our um, magic ball project. Now there are a number of different balls out there like a happy ball or sarcastic ball and some of these balls may not have exactly 20 answers to them so what we really want to do here is make a way that we can uh, automatically adjust our magic ball to handle other different kinds of balls and also in doing so we're going to um, create a text file and import those answers from that file so let's go ahead and get started alright so we're going to make a new class and we're going to call this um, inspirational ball so public class inspiration ball extends magic ball and then we're going to need a place for our fields our constructor and our methods so in, since we don't know how many answers are going to be in um, our list that we're importing it's better to use an array list instead of a list. You can see here in our previous magic 8 ball uh, when we construct our ball we hard code the answers into an array that's set at size 20 and so this array doesn't grow or shrink and if we had less answers we would there would be spots in the array that would return null. So we're going to use an array list instead that will grow and shrink uh, with the number of answers that we input from the file. So we'll say array list, and of course our answers are type string, and then we'll declare the array list. But we won't assign it to anything yet. Then in the constructor, we'll say public inspiration ball. And in the constructor, we'll instantiate our array when we create the ball. So we'll say answers is equal to new array list string. Now it's at this point that we're going to scan in the file that contains all of our answers. So we're going to have to go to the top and import some classes. So we'll say import java.io which is input output dot file and we're going to say import java dot util dot array list we needed that for our array list that we just did and we'll also need to import the scanner class so we'll say import java dot util dot scanner okay go back to our constructor here and now we're going to say scanner but and we're going to give it a name file scanner you could also do file reader if you wanted to It'd be another name and then we're going to do something called um, a try catch statement so just in case it can't find the file we don't want it to f throw an error called um, file not found so and freeze up our program so we're going to say try and then after the try we do catch so in the try statement we're going to say file scanner is equal to new scanner and then we're also going to do new, create a new instance of file and we get this from our io.file import and then we're going to pass in our file name and in this case it's going to be something like inspiration answers.txt but by just placing the file name variable in there we can pass in any file name and then in our catch statement it's going to be um, Here's where we say exception, we create an instance of exception, and we're just making the e is the variable for the type of 
exception that we're going to have, and it's pretty much any exception. There are a number of different ones that are talked about in your book. We're going to say, s and then we're going to say, if we have an error, we're going to print out file not found. So we'll say system dot out dot print ln file not found colon, and then we'll do the e, which should contain the name of the file, and or the exception actually, and then we're just going to return. Um, now, since you're not returning anything, the option would be to not return anything either. And then down here, it's, we're going to say, if we do find a file, then we're going to say file scanner. And we're going to use an iterator method called has next line. And then we're going to read these into our array list. So we'll say string answer is equal to file scanner dot next line. And this works the same thing as the next line method that we've been using in the scanner class for, for user input in, in many of the previous projects. And then we're just going to say answers dot add. Remember back to array lists where um, we can use the add method to add things to the list. And then we're just adding the answer to the list. So I'm going to put a comment here. If file found, add each answer to the array. And then up here, this is if file not found, print out a message. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and save this now so I don't lose my um, work so far. Now, since we don't know how um, many answers are going to be in that file, we need to override num answers in our from our abstract class. Notice if we go back to the magic eight ball, our num answers are basically we're returning 19, 0 through 19 is 20 answers. But in our inspirational ball, we don't know how many is going to be in that file. So if you think for a minute, what method can we actually use from our array list to handle any number of answers that are in the file? And the answer is that uh, the method dot size for array lists will get the size of the array for us. So we're just going to say at override and then we're going to say protected hit num answers and this time we're going to say return answers dot size And then the other thing that we need to, the other method we need to override is our um, get answer method. So in our previous eight ball, our get answer method went into our answers array at the answer index and got our answer for us. So for our inspiration ball, we need to um, check to see, make sure the file is not empty. Uh, if it is empty, say something like the answers aren't available. And if there are answers available, then we need to uh, return those answers from the answer array list. So we'll say at override, and then we'll say public string get answer. And we'll say if answers dot size is zero, then we're going to return no answers available. Else we'll return answers dot get answer minus 
one. Um, and actually, we don't need this else because if the if is not true, we're just going to return um, what we need. And also, why do we need to do answer minus one? Um, because, and you remember, answer is up here from our or from our list that we've scanned in. So. Uh, we need to do minus one because when we scan it in, it's going to think of that as in position uh, one, and we really need position zero in the array list. Otherwise, we'll never access the first element in the array. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save. And now, if what we need to do to access this ball is we're going to go into our runner and here where we create our magic ball when we say uh, instance of new magic 8 ball what we want to do is comment this out and we want to create a new instance of inspirational ball so we're going to say magic ball ball is equal to new magic or new in inspirational ball And that's really all, all we have to change because we still kept the variable name from the previous ball. So let's go ahead and try it out and see if we have any errors that we need to fix after we compile our project. So one of the answer one of the things that we need to fix is that we need a place to pass in the file name when we create our magic ball. So we're going to have to go up to the constructor here and place in string file name and then so let's we'll save it and then when we go back to our runner we need to when we're passing in inspir creating inspiration ball we need to pass in the name of the file and I saved my file as uh, inspirational underscore answers dot text. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that in here inspiration underscore answers dot txt. And of course, since it's a file name, it has to be in quotes. And our other answer is related to our variable name and I believe we want to call it answer index let's try that instead of answer so we're going to need to fix it there and I believe we're going to need to fix it here Alright, so that wasn't the right um, fix. So here's answers, so where we define answers. So these should be answer and not answer index. So let me go back and change those back. And now we're um, back to this one error that says variable, um, cannot find symbol variable answer. And I think that's because it's out of scope. All right, so since we're trying to get an index or an, or an answer at a particular index, um, I believe instead of answer, which is just defined as a string up above, we need to define it as answer index. And let's try compiling it now. Okay, there we go. Now let's go ahead back to our runner and try, cross our fingers and try working with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit run and up oh, see now we got an error that says file not found so it can't find the file that I'm talking about so let's go ahead and check the file name and also the location of where it is in our um, hierarchy so oh, it says answers with an S so I think that's probably the first place 
we have a problem. So this should be inspirational answers. Let's try again. Oh, not found the file. So we can say, will I win? You're a winner. Or I can say yes. And or you can say, will I lose? Um, you have lost weight. <laughs> that's that's really nice. Uh, no, I don't want to. Um, no, I don't want to answer another question. Who knows what'll get me back? And then I have a nice day. So that's subclassing another ball. And so what I challenge you to do is to look up another type of ball online, or come up with a set of answers, put them into a text uh, that you like, put them into a text file and use them in your Magic 8-Ball. And now that you have an array list instead of an array, and you can use any number of answers, and also you can import um, any file. All you're going to have to do to do a different file is to go back to the runner, and of course create an instance of the type of ball that you created, and pass in the file name with all the answers. You could also um, try to adapt this project and import a set of questions. All right, that's it for this pro um, this video, and I'll see you in the next set.